Sky darkens. And flames. And cow. That's great. That's good. Got that? That's Fabo. Fabo, Fabo, Fabo. Thank you very, very much. Yay! That's the one. Hey, well, thank you very much, everybody, for a great first block. And um, have a great break. Everyone's having a break, and we will see you back here soon enough. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the second unit, that is a wrap on block one. <laughs>we're just going to get to one more pickup in Bag End. Uh, hello? Yep. Come oh. on. Oh, sorry. Hi, Pete. Just hey, to, uh, Andy. Come on in. Just wanted to do one more pickup in here, if that was all right. What's this? Oh, this is the video blog pickup. Yeah. That's, that's right. There yeah, go. End of oh. block one. But anyway, we, um, we just wanted to say hi to everybody because we haven't done one of these video blogs since the beginning of the shoot. God, it feels like a lifetime. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't. Because you, the first week of shooting... We did with Andy as Gollum. <laughs> you weren't a second unit director in those days. You no, were you were an actor. No, no, no. You were an old-fashioned. Oh, no, no, no. And now I've crossed over to the dark side. You've now gone to the dark side. I'm white. I'm actually <laughs> <laughs> white. It's all yours. Is it? Oh, okay. Just give us a good battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know how you do it. It's, um, uh. Uh, you get tired. I always just tell people I get exhausted at the end of the first couple of days and stay exhausted <laughs> until it finishes. You know, we have 250 days of shooting on these two Hobbit movies, and I think it's a much better way to divide that up into three blocks and then have some time to edit what you've done, look at it, hand visual effects shots over to the CGI guys. You can really focus on the script revisions. It's just a, it's a much smarter way to mm. shoot these big films. Yeah, on something of this scale too. I mean, when we got the Given Art t-shirts, which said 54 days down, 200 to go, I have to admit, I don't know how, how great it was. Uh, please wear these on set tomorrow. <laughs> Everywhere you turn on, on the people's backs was 200 days to go. It's like, oh God, I felt tired before lunch, you know. Good news is it's over. First day back is Monday, the 5th of September. So thank you guys. Yeah, what are you guys up to during the break? Uh, my wife and I, my lovely wife Aileen, we've got a holiday in the South Island of New Zealand planned. And my lovely, my lovely, gorgeous wife. I'm just going to work on the house. I'm leaving shortly after talking to you for London, which is a long journey uh, by plane. And, and uh, once there, I immediately go into production of a, of a play I'm going to do by Eduardo de Filippo. I'm uh, going to America, to Pebble Beach, in a week to play some golf. Work on my tan so that I can really freak the makeup people out when I come back. I'm having a break. <laughs> I'm having four weeks off. A bit of sleeping in. My favourite hobby. First, we're going to Australia to see our eldest daughter. I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to attempt to to sort of write and record a bit of a psychedelic sludge rock album. Hitting the fabric shops in central London. I go home to Thailand tomorrow. To Barcelona to meet Talk to Who fans from Spain. Bali for 11 days. London and Paris to see friends. Manhattan Beach because it's the closest beach to the airport. I haven't been home for the last three years back in Belgium, so my mum is cracking the whip. And then I'm going to Vegas and spend all my hard-earned cash. Do some more swimming and lots of gold. Probably get a, bit, a little bit drunk, a little bit on a holiday. Oh, I'm looking forward to going back with mates and getting on the drink where I'm not going to get a bad reputation because they already know my mic. And now I'm going back to Ireland to see my family and see some of my mates in Belfast for a, a quiet little weekend. I hope no one follows me for about three weeks at least. Hopefully come back totally refreshed and ready to rock in the next lot. What are you doing on break, Andy? Well, I'm going back home to uh, maybe have a little bit of time off uh, to go on all over the family. And then, and then really, before you know it, I'll be back. It's weird because you, you get to this point when you're at the end of a block of shooting and you it sort of almost feels like you're going on vacation, but it's not because mm -hmm. I'm, on Monday morning I'm in the cutting room um, yeah. editing and I've got to have meetings with Alan and John and Dan about designing stuff for the second block and with Richard Taylor about all the things he has to build. So in some respects I, I'm back into pre-production again, but also I, I'm in post-production because I'm editing. Plus, we're in production because we're shooting these movies. So yeah. it's sort of like being in pre-production, production, and post-production all at the same time. It kind of gets a bit, a bit screwy. But before I get to do any of that, I've got to jump on a plane tomorrow morning and go location scouting down the South Island. So we'll take some good pictures.
since we're going to be doing location shooting during our next block of shooting, it's really time to have to nail everything down. Well, on the recce, there'll be, uh, it's usually about 17 of us that go. We get around in five helicopters, usually. <laughs> it's quite a spectacle when we turn up. Peter, Caro, uh, Zane, Bridget, Andrew, Dan Henna, uh, Simon Bright, art director, Steve Ingram, John Howe, Ellen Lee, uh, Eric Sandin, we have Tony Kitty, the grip, uh, Reg Garside, Gaffer, and myself, location scout Dave Coma joins us, and Peter's assistant Sebastian, the ever faithful Sebastian's there. Here in the mountains, I put my hand out, and a cup of tea slides into it. That's what we like. There's even a Starbucks <laughs> up here in the Southern Alps. Slippery, hard to walk, and juggle a cup of tea at the same time on this sort of. I know, no mean feat. I never come prepared for these things. I always somehow imagine it's going to be dry and warm and nice. At least it's not raining. We'll be not just scouting, which is essentially searching for locations, we're now returning to the locations that we liked and we're going to start to talk about the logistics. The old thing, by the time you've helicoptered everybody in and then you've got to helicopter them out for nightfall, you're not actually here know. early morning or late afternoon. No, so right, it's yeah, all, during the middle of the day. It's all broad yeah. daytime. Well, yeah. Un unless camp you camp out here. Well, that, just, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On set, we are allowing approximately half a rugby field for the essential equipment trucks and then our marquees, crew parking and also unit-based parking, which is where all our makeup and costume facilities are. You make a path along the edge of the swamp in this In essence, we need to create space for two rugby fields of equipment. It's weird on locations because you're standing in the middle of a mountain or, or, or a valley or some beautiful place and you're having to figure out, you know, where are we going to put the crew tents? Where are people going to get changed? Where are the portaloos going to go? Because all that stuff has to be where you're not going to want to point the camera. You could have Gandalf and the dwarves running up over this brow here and scurrying, hiding down behind these rocks and just as they get there you crane up and there's one. The last thing you want to find out in six months time is you're standing on this beautiful mountain and saying, wow, this is exactly the shot I want to do when you find you've got, you know, 20 portaloos right in front of the camera. <laughs> That's not what you want to do. So well, you've got to figure all that stuff out. We've got to keep looking. It's mm -hmm. sort of it's sooner rather than later, isn't it? Yeah. We'll be flying, I, I don't know, maybe 30 locations, no. locations probably. And we're shooting locations around the Mackenzie country, around wilder landscapes below Mount Cook. And we will also be shooting around Dunedin Way, more beautiful stone, rock, you know, wild country. And that's quite exciting because it's an area of Middle Earth we haven't visited before. That mm. big rock could be part of a house, couldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Where we're scouting presently for the edge of Mirkwood and the Anduin grasslands is south of Queenstown. It's pretty incredible. And shooting that. We're still searching and trying to work out how we're going to shoot Lonely Mountain, Misty Mountain Pass. Lonely Mountain should be by itself, but you can look over in that direction there. There's still a few rivers that we're scouting for. <laughs> I think we're getting pretty close to photographing every decent river in New Zealand now. It would be quite funny to, ha to have th 13, 13 barrels all in the middle of this thing. Just, just going nowhere. Yeah, with the Help. guys shouting, come on, get on with it. Come on, move ahead, get on, go faster. Is it a floater? It's quite heavy. We're going to go to some reasonably remote places. Sometimes places that you know, very, very few people have seen. There's plenty of New Zealand that we haven't seen yet. I think people think it's such a small country. And Lord of the Rings, <laughs> we saw so much of it that we must have seen everything. But believe me, we haven't. There's a, there's a huge amount of wonderful locations still to come. It's quite a pretty spot, That's great. It's a great spot. Well, we'll say goodbye for now. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this update. And... There may well be another one coming during the break sometime, so keep your eye out for that.